I appreciate Dave being on the program with us. Dave, thank you so much for hey, being Dan, with thanks us. Thanks for the kind words. Great to be on. Dave, um, you and I have a lot in common. Uh, I got my Master's of Theology from American. Uh, oh. my, my economics comes from Penn, but um, I, uh, you, you have a Ph.D. From, in economics, and uh, we, have, we have a lot in common, and I'm sure we share a lot of the same views. And I right. really appreciate, you know, uh, I got a call to your uh, last election from a GOP strategist in Virginia, in Richmond, who told me I was hurting Eric Cantor's numbers and I ought to be ashamed of myself, call myself a conservative. I quickly respond that Eric Cantor ought to be ashamed of himself, calling himself a conservative. And if his numbers are going down, it's got nothing to do with me. Uh, it's got everything to do with himself. He won that election, of course. And um, hopefully things are going to be a little different because I'm hoping that you've got a different perspective about our economy, a different perspective about what needs to happen in Washington for your constituents in the state of Virginia. Tell me a little bit, give me a snapshot of your uh, economic plan, what you would like to see for the country and how you think you can impact that. Right, right. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, I mean, the obvious uh, elephant in the room is the financial crisis right back in 07. And so you say, well, surely our leaders learned something after that disaster that brought our nation to its knees. And the evidence is uh, overwhelming. They did not, right? The crooks up on Wall Street in, in some of the big banks, and I'm, I'm pro-business, right? So I'm just talking about the crooks. Yeah, uh, they didn't go to jail. They're on the they're on Eric's Rolodex in, right. instead of going to jail, right? And on Obama's Rolodex as well. It's it's both sides of the aisle. And so our founders, if they were with us today, you know, just a snapshot. The first thing they would do is what Madisonian logic dictates in the Constitution. That's separate powers at every turn. There's no way they could have anticipated a day like that we have today with these billions of dollars chasing all over the place and these guys enriching themselves. At every turn. And so you just look at the big issues, right? I'm running on the Constitution, free markets, federalism, bringing the power of the federal government back down to the states where it belongs uh, under under the Tenth Amendment. And so look at Obamacare. Big business is excluded from that somehow. Uh, Eric Cantor is in favor of amnesty as well. Uh, amnesty uh, is great for big business. They get cheap labor. Uh, but everyone in the 7th District gets cheap wages, right? And then the taxpayer has to pick up the tab if anything goes wrong there. And so just over and over and over, the smoking gun uh, in the campaign that, that is related to the crisis, uh, Eric Kanner back the Stock Act was going through, that, which eliminated congressmen and their families from doing insider trading. Uh, the rest of us go to jail for that. Mm -hmm. uh, one congressman blocked that so that and, and changed the language of the Stock Act so that spouses could still do insider trading. And mm -hmm. guess who that was? Eric Cantor. Mm -hmm. Right? Single-handedly, that's CNN reports, two times, 60 minutes reports. And so in a snapshot, uh, the financial system is broken, started in housing with uh, Fannie and Freddie making two-thirds of all subprime loans. The government sector backed, right? It took over the banking industry, and we wonder why things go wrong. Mm -hmm. And so that led to the financial crisis, and that leads to our current 0.1% uh, economic growth the last quarter. And the uh, health care system is broke. The legal system is broke. The rule of law is broken. And so that's plenty of inspiration for me to get up and uh, try to do something about it. So thanks for asking the question. So, Dave, let me ask you this, and this is an important question for me and our listeners. I know um, it's, a, it's important for – I've worked in Washington for many years. I understand the um, – culture down there and what's going to what are you going to do to stay out of falling in to the um you know the the the, the lobbyist the continuing campaign uh what are you going to do to protect the interest of your constituents that you are, uh, I know right now, because you're running for Congress, you know and understand, I'm sure, uh, since you're running on the Constitution, that uh, you may get hired to be a representative of your constituents. 
What are you going to do to keep from turning your back on them like uh, everybody else seems to do as soon as they get there for a year or two? Yeah, well, you know, I teach ethics and economics for the last 18 years. And ethics is, you know, roughly putting the rules of the game down on paper ahead of time, right? So it's like playing a football game. you got to have the rules on paper ahead of time so you know who's cheating. And so you asked exactly the right question, right? How do you know? I don't get tempted to do all the things that all the cronies are doing up there. And and the answer is you put pledges down on paper ahead of time, right? So I'm running on term limits. I'm promised to put a bill in. I will term limit myself to 12 years. Uh, I'm running to put in a bill on a fair tax or a flat tax. I'm running on the promise to visit every county. I have 10 right, counties and cities in my district every month. And if I don't do that, get rid of me. My job is to represent you, not to represent cronies. Mm. And so I view my job as being a representative of of the people. And so that's the right question. And so I'm going to put those on paper. And if somebody gets to me and bribes me or lures me away with money or whatever, then it'll be clear that I've broken my word and uh, you should get rid of me immediately. You know, I get asked all the time about term limits. And I tell people the same thing all the time because people want term limits. I say we've got term limits called the Constitution. We have an opportunity. It's called a voting booth. We have term limits. The problem is we, the American people, have not stepped up to the, to the plate to fire these guys when they don't do what they say they're going to do. And hopefully that has changed. And I appreciate you uh, bringing, bringing that up. You also mentioned tax, Dave. Um, our tax system is severely broken. Uh, back in 1998, I have a, a great relationship with Steve Forbes. He's been on this program uh, many, many right. times, and I remember talking about the fair tax. I happen to be a fair tax or a flat tax guy. Um, I, I don't believe in fixing the tax code. The only fix I believe this tax code can have is put in the trash and start over again. Uh, we can tweak it all we want. But um, the problem is there are an awful lot of lobbyists and an awful lot of people uh, making millions of dollars off the complexities of the tax code. Um, let, me, let me ask you a question. You mentioned that you're for a fair and flat tax, and, and uh, I appreciate that. But let me just ask you a question. What do you think? You've obviously learned a lot over the last uh, couple of years about uh, Congress, or you wouldn't be running. Do you think, in all honesty, that there's ever going to be a shot at fixing our tax system? Uh, I, I agree with your logic. I mean, the, the, the fair tax has that, right? You can get rid of the IRS itself by going with that structure, and that, that would be great. And then you also ask the, the next relevant one is, what, what are the odds of getting that done? And uh, this year was a good example. A representative camp of Michigan put yeah. in a Reagan-esque tax bill that had lower rates. Right, mm-hmm. it's only two rates, twenty five percent and ten yep. percent. Got rid of a lot of the deductions, cleared up things. Right, so it's not perfect, but it was moving in the Reagan direction, and in the direction we're talking about. And the leadership of the Republican side said uh, basically, "Nope, too risky for an election year. Let's bypass it." Yeah. Right. And so you're right. The people have to speak up, and it's very hard right now. I'm I'm at the end of a campaign with thirty days to go. Right. And what's Eric Cantor doing? He's blanketing Fox News every night, all the news channels with negative ads on me saying I'm a liberal professor or worked on some council of economic advisors under my boss, the, the liberal governor, Tim Kaine, and raised your taxes and all this nonsense. It, all of it is just false, right? But he's got millions of dollars. I can't answer it. Hmm. And so that is part of my logic for why we do need term limits. These, these incumbents have millions of dollars in war chests. And uh, I, I've got the people, I've got the grassroots, and I think the vote is there uh, to be had to win this election if we can get it out. But those millions of dollars make it very hard when they're, uh, when they're blanketing Fox News and all those channels. I've got to rely on my reputation and people who know me in the region to get the word out. And they, we're, we're making that happen. Fact Check just came out and, and, and called it a bunch of rubbish as well yesterday. So we're getting some help from the higher ups as well. Well, I'll say this uh, a couple years ago in Richmond, I did a town hall meeting the week before Eric Cantor. He got about 200 people. I had about a thousand people. We've had a lot of people. We've had a lot of people listening to this program and uh, I hope it helps you um, to, for people to really think about what is going on here and what we need to do in this short period of time. So hopefully that'll, that'll give, 
give you a, a little bit of a boost. I'm not, uh, folks. I'm, you know, I'm not allowed. Don't want, you know, I'm not endorsing anybody. Uh, it's not more of uh, an endorsement as it is. We need change, folks. You all know that. And one of the things that I say, Dave, to every politician I talk to, I say, you know, here's the thing. I, you know, I tell people that I can have, I can help any candidate win with this idea. The American people, and I, you know, I do town hall meetings all over the country. I think I have my finger on the pulse of what conservative Americans want. And I get thousands of people come out. Let me tell you what the change has been in the last three years. And I had this um, a conversation with uh, Tom Colburn. He's, uh, and, and he wasn't real appreciative of it. But I was saying that what the, well, he was going on about something. I said, excuse me, uh, Senator, I, I respectfully have to interrupt you here. But the problem is that the reason you're not doing this, and I know what you're about to say, is because you don't have the media on your side. He said, well, it's true, Dan. I said, well, I, I get that. But here's the problem. Republicans don't want to wage battle because they're too afraid of winning, losing the war. See, if they can't win the war, they don't want to have a battle. And I always say, thank God that George Washington wasn't like that. Thank God he decided right. to cross the Delaware on that icy Christmas night, or we'd yep. all have some nice British accent. I, you know, it is amazing, and that is the problem. And people are ready for battle, not literally. They don't, but we need to take up arms, not literally, but we need to fight, and we don't have enough representatives that have the backbone that are that are willing to lose the battle right for the sake right. of getting the issue out there that's what's yeah, got to well, happen i agree with you i think your logic's right on the on the money i mean basically the canner and the republican leadership let uh obamacare go through for that reason right they didn't want right. to fight the fight right absolutely and then and then on the amnesty they're just buckling because they don't yep. think we have the right message for for the rest of the world i teach their third world economics and how uh, Republicans get cast as being uh, less than generous, I don't get it. China's finally feeding its 1.2 billion people because of free market capitalism. Right. They're moving toward the freedom needle, and we're moving away from it. it, right. it it's just unbelievable to me. It is unbelievable. And, and uh, you know, I hope that I hope you get elected. I hope you can get in the fight. And I hope that nowhere in sight of you when you get put your suit on in the morning— is that white flag of surrender that I believe most Republicans quietly tuck away in their vest pocket to run it up the flagpole at any moment. And uh, I hope uh, that that will never exist in your as part of your wardrobe, because that's exactly no, what we don't No, you got that know. right. There's, there's no white flags. And I encourage people to go out to my website. You'll see I'm running 100 percent on principle. There's no negative. You'll see every principle I've laid out. I'm running on those. I'm not running against Eric Tanner as a man. I'm running against his principles. And he is not following the Republican creed at all, which begins with a commitment to free markets, uh, to the rule of law, to equal justice for everybody, for fiscal responsibility, for strong defense, et cetera. So go, go check me out at Dave Bratt uh, for Congress.com. Bratt's just B-R-A-T. And you'll see I'm, I'm a man of principle uh, my entire life. Dave Bratt for Congress. Dot com, Dave Bratt for Congress dot com. I hope everybody uh, will check it out. We've got uh, 30 days there in Virginia. And uh, Dave, I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to be praying. I'm not against Eric Cantor, as you're not. But I am for the Constitution of the United States. I am for America. I'm for the American people. We need change, brother. And I uh, hope you can institute some change. Dave Bratt for congress.com i hope everybody will check him out if you're listening to in virginia this is not a guy that's got the millions and millions and millions of dollars that eric Cantor has but he does need your feet to get to the voting booth and vote right dave i want to thank you brother i appreciate you being on with us hey dan god bless you and thanks for all you do for especially for our uh, retired veterans and thanks to your audience for all they do too god bless you all have a great day thank you dave